<laughs> Welcome to Power Code Music. In this presentation, we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, which are mixers. And with this, we are going to do a comparison between analog and digital mixers. Many recording engineers and producers view their mixers as musical instruments and the heart of their sound. Since groups of various audio sources are routed through the mixer, the unit has a big impact on production even before any effects are added or the mastering process is invoked. The mixer is quite simply where all the magic happens, and we know they can be standalone units or integrated into other devices with varying scopes and specifications. In this presentation, we're going to first look at the technical differences between analog and digital mixers. Then we'll check out the pros and cons of each so that you can get an idea of which unit may work best for your individual needs. This is not about what's hot or cool, so please keep that in mind throughout this presentation. Anyone interested in purchasing or upgrading to a standalone digital or analog mixer should be aware of exactly what that means. That is, what does it mean to use an analog or digital mixer in your workflow? With this, I decided to take a closer look at what those differences are and share the results. I strongly suggest that you know your requirements. That is, take the time to sit down and figure out exactly what you need. Otherwise, you could easily waste time and money buying gear that you want and the gear that other people say is cool as opposed to buying what you actually need to get the job done. So it's best to know your requirements first because it's going to be a key in meeting your objectives when purchasing or upgrading to a unit that best fits your production workflow. So sit back, relax, stay with me. We have a lot of good information to cover and you're not going to want to miss it. But before we jump in, you may want to ask yourself the following questions first. Number one, will I need a unit that has more channels than I have devices so that I can grow? Number two, do I use a more high tech or computer based workflow? Number three, what can I actually afford to spend? Number four, is a little extra noise in my recordings acceptable to capture a more natural and richer sound? Number five, will I be recording live in the studio or both? Number six, will I be working primarily alone or collaborating with others? Now, if you're shopping for a new mixer or looking to make a change, your answers to these questions will help you determine which type of unit may work best for you. Now, keep in mind that this is only the beginning. Conquering a mixer can take years of experimentation. So making the best decision at this point is very important. Let's analyze the technical differences between analog and digital mixers. Audio mixers fall into two main technical categories, which are analog and digital. These two base categories govern a mixer's technical specifications, functionality, and overall sound. Now with this, let's start with analog mixers. We know that the first mixers were analog and have been around since 1958 when EMI's Record Engineering Development Department installed the first dedicated stereo mixing system at Abbey Road Studios in London, England, and they called that system RED17, that is R-E-D-D-17. -D -D now R-E-D-D -D is an acronym, of course, for that department. Now the literal definition of analog means a person or thing seen as comparable to another. Now when used as an adjective, like we're using it in this presentation, the definition of analog means relating to or using signals or information represented by continuously variable physical values such as voltage, an electrical current, or an electrical charge. 
With this, analog is completely electrical and it's important to keep that in mind. This means that when using analog mixers, as opposed to using digital mixers, there's one less transducer step during live mixing, which results in the audio sounding thicker and more natural. A transducer is a device that converts variations in physical values, such as pressure or brightness, into electrical signals or vice versa. Examples of transducers include microphones and loudspeakers. Examples of analog signal processing includes crossover filters and loudspeakers, as well as bass, treble, and volume controls in audio units. Analog processing elements include capacitors, inductors, and resistors as passive elements, and transistors as active elements. Now we'll move on to digital mixers. Yamaha is credited with releasing the first production digital audio mixer back in 1993 called the DMP-9. This unit was available in both 8 and 16 channel models. Now in relation to signals or data, the definition of digital means that information is expressed as a series of organized digits made up of ones and zeros. The series of digits represents a physical value, such as voltage or magnetic polarization. After input, digital mixers first convert audio signals into a numeric binary representation. The numeric binary representation is then divided into component frequencies. After processing those frequencies, they are then converted back to electrical analog signals before the output so that we can hear them. Now hardware analog to digital and digital to analog converters are used in the device to make this happen at the inputs and the outputs. Superior converters contribute to faster and a more effective unit. Now from our analysis of these two devices, it should be quite apparent by now that the technical differences between the analog and digital mixers have a direct effect on the unit's sound and features. It's important to note that some analog mixers include onboard digital effects or other digital features. This does not make it a digital mixer. What this means is that the analog mixer would function as described previously in this presentation until the signal is routed to the onboard digital effects processor or digital feature. When this happens, the digital effects processor or digital feature would then convert that analog signal within the unit to a digital signal and then process it. When it's done, it would convert that digital signal back to an analog signal within the unit. An example of this type of device includes the Tascam Model 16 and Model 24 multi-track recorder mixer units. Let's take a look at the pros and cons of analog mixers. We'll start with the pros. Analog mixers are more economical than digital mixers because they have less features. The sound they produce is also less processed and closer to the original audio signals. They're simpler in design and features, which makes them easier to learn and use, so they're great for beginners. Let's move on to the cons of analog mixers. Their electrical signal-based designs make them noisier than digital mixers. This is a big deal for some people. The top-end expensive units require a lot of processing power, which makes them bigger and heavier than that of digital mixers of comparable quality. Let's move on to the pros and cons of digital mixers. We'll start with the pros. Digital mixers have more features than analog mixers and are programmable. They allow you to customize the setup with grouping and routing to your specific needs. They produce signals that are cleaner than analog mixers and digital processing can filter out 
the excess noise variants that are introduced when recording, and this is a big deal for many. Digital mixers are also capable of automated mixdowns. They can provide more external device interfaces so more units can be connected simultaneously. Let's move on to the cons of digital mixers. Digital mixers are more expensive, a bigger hit to the pocketbook than analog mixers because they have more features. Their features can be overwhelming for folks who aren't technical minded or who struggle to understand how to use a mixer to begin with. Now for them, the number of controls on the user interface can be confusing or even frustrating at times. Digital mixers require more time to learn and understand due to their larger feature sets. So this is something to take into account. In summary, having a good idea of what makes both mixers work along with the pros and cons is a good start. Again, it's important that you know what you need before you purchase or upgrade so that you can put yourself in the best position to be successful. Just because one unit may appear to be more advanced doesn't mean that it's the right fit for you in the way that you record to be the most productive. Look, the bottom line here is that a mixer that works great for one person may not be the best unit for another. Well, that is a wrap. If you like this presentation, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button on your screen now and join our group. We have new videos coming out every 7 to 14 days and we would love to have you be a part of our team. Also leave a comment in the comment section below. Let us know what you think about this video. And check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Spotify. Now while you're here, listen to some of the other music and check out some of the other videos. Let us know what you think about that too. And especially check out the playlist because they're developed and put together just for you. Thank you so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you soon.